Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about Lambda container images, uh, which just got announced in reInvent 2020, uh, two days back. Uh, also, I have a separate video going over all the serverless container and DevOps announcements and a short demo in a separate video. Uh, I'll link it up top, so check it out if interested. Uh, however, in this video, we are going to dive deep into Lambda container image, we are going to start with what is it and why we need it. We are going to do a demo and then uh, we'll talk about a couple of best practices. All right, let's get started. So when you invoke a Lambda function, uh, what happens under the hood is AWS spins up a container for you. Uh, the container image and everything, AWS manages it. You have no control over it. Uh, so, and then when you have your code and external dependencies, uh, your, after that underlying container comes up, provided by AWS, your code and dependencies gets loaded. Until now, with this Lambda container image, you can create this underlying container. Uh, so let's take a look at the flow to understand it a little better. So let's say you, the almighty developer, uh, dockerize your app, uh, and in that Docker file, you, you include all the external dependencies, your code, all that stuff. And after you create that container image, you save it in uh, Elastic Container Registry, or you could save it in Docker Hub as well. I'm just giving an example. Now, what you can do is, so now with this change, you can create a Lambda using that image. So when that Lambda gets invoked, instead of AWS providing you a container, the container that you created and saved into the ECR will be used as the underlying container. So you have a lot of flexibility in this. Uh, so going back to the previous slide, so with this change, you can package and deploy Lambda functions as container images. So one thing to, to be clear, I don't get confused, this does not run Lambda code on EKS ECS. Uh, so in case you guys are familiar with Knative or Cloud Run, where you can take your uh, serverless code and run it as a container on the container platform, uh, such as GKE or in AWS case, EKS ECS. This is not that. Uh, this is, if you already dockerized your app, already have a mature ecosystem, uh, you can create the Lambda image with your code, save it in the repository, and then your Lambda will run with that image. Also another advantage is uh, this container image can be up to 10 gigabyte in size compared to 50 megabyte for a deployment using the zipped file for Lambda. All right, so we already went over the flow. Uh, so going back to a couple more points, AWS provides some base images. Uh, so, you know, like when you, let's say you create a, um, a Python Lambda. So with the Python Lambda, AWS container that it provides already has Boto3 and some of the other uh, libraries. So even in this case, you can start with the AWS provided a base image uh, with, with some predefined libraries already installed, and then you can uh, get other external dependencies, other libraries, install your code. Now, as part of this container, uh, there is a runtime interface client which manages the interaction between Lambda service and your function code. You can also create your own custom image. You don't have to grab the base images that AWS provides. However, since that runtime interface client manages the interaction between Lambda service and your function code, uh, there are some constraints. So if you create your custom image, you require to have the runtime interface clients. Currently, the image is only supporting Linux best, so no Windows supported at this point, and it supports specific container image settings. So the last point is probably a little confusing. I'll give a link to this page. Uh, so these are the requirements. And then the container image settings will have entry point, CMD, work directory, and ENV. You can set those uh, parameters. Also, these are the base images provided. As you can see, Node.js, Python, and a couple of other popular languages. So what are some of the advantages? Why we do it? It's because uh, sometimes organizations invest a lot in the existing container tooling. 
Uh, so with this change, you don't have to create serverless tooling. And you can utilize those existing container tooling. Maybe you already dockerized your app. And now instead of running it on uh, EKS ECS, you can run it on Lambda and take advantages of uh, Lambda, like because Lambda integrates with 140 AWS services out of the box and a bunch of other advantages. You can look up the difference between uh, Lambda and container in a separate video that I did. Um, secondly, now you can create image with what you need. Um, so when AWS provides you the standard image, it already comes with a bunch of stuff and then your code gets loaded on top of it after the container comes up. So now, since you create the image, you can pick and choose. You might say, hey, you know what? I don't need this Boto3. I don't need this standard library. So you can make the container much more uh, streamlined. Also, your code gets baked in. The external dependencies get baked in into this container image directly, and it is getting saved into the repository. So it will lead to faster start time. But talking about best practices, at the same time, do not load everything in the image, right? So if you keep uh, adding more stuff that you don't need, it will, it, the start time will be slower, right? And with this, you can also perform local testing with runtime interface emulator. So in case you guys and girls are familiar with SAM or serverless application module, uh, you could do local testing with that, but you have to run some commands and set up some stuff. Uh, with this, you can perform local testing straight out of the box uh, because it is running on a Docker. Uh, so that's what Sam was doing, right? It, it will spin up a Docker, load your Lambda code and make it run locally in that Docker. Uh, since this is based on a container, Docker container image, uh, that's what it is doing. It can do local testing with runtime interface emulator. And lastly, we talked about this advantage. Your deployment packet size could be 10 gigabyte compared to 50 megabyte zip deployment. Uh, don't get confused this with the Lambda memory size. Uh, another reinvent announcement came out that now your Lambda can have up to 10 gigabyte of memory. This is not that, right? This is the package deployment size of the Lambda, not the memory size. All right, with that, let's jump into a demo. Uh, keep in mind when you use this feature, uh, you have to pay for ECR, right? If you're saving your container image in ECR. Uh, however, ECR is quite cost effective. And also this feature is supported in AWS CLI, CloudFormation and some. All right, for this demo, I'm going to use this blog post. You can also follow the developer guide. However, this blog post's example is a little bit more uh, complex than the hello world in the developer guide. Also, this blog post shows how to hook it up to HTTP API as well. So that's like a bonus thing. Um, so what this does is uh, this Lambda randomly creates like letters, uh, like it will say, hello, this, and then uh, it will just create a bunch of random words. Uh, so what we are doing is we're gonna take a base image uh, that AWS provides for Node.js, and then we're gonna uh, install some dependency and then dockerize our code and then create the container image, uh, put it into ECR, and then we're gonna create a Lambda from the ECR uh, and then uh, run it. All right, so uh, let's do step by step. So I'm gonna jump into uh, Cloud9 and uh, create a folder. Okay, I am in uh, Cloud9, uh, so under Lambda experiments, I'm going to create a new folder I'll name it a Lambda node container. Okay, now uh, I'm going to copy the code from the blog and uh, create a app.js. Okay, I have the blog and the Cloud9 open side by side. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this code. Okay, I'm gonna create a new file, name it app.js, paste it here, save this, go back to the blog. Okay, I'm gonna go to that folder. Okay, then I'm going to uh, install npm init, npm install, so these are the external libraries that we need for this code. Uh, so the idea is I'm putting everything in here and then I'm going to create the Docker image. Okay, let's run this one by one. So 
So I'm just going to press enter. So this will get the default values. Okay. Now I'm going to install PDF kit. Okay. Now I'm going to install get stream. So now you we are going to create the Docker file. So under this, right click new file, Docker file. Okay, you can see that we are uh, grabbing the base image for Node.js version 12. And this is coming from Docker Hub. So this is adding the source code app.js uh, and the files described in the package JSON uh, and the package lock JSON, like when we are doing all the npm init, npm install, they all got added to the list of dependencies that this code needs. Uh, so we are adding all this in the base image. Uh, then we are running the npm install. And finally, uh, with the CMD parameter, uh, we are setting the function handler as app.lambda handler. Uh, so remember when we are talking about uh, different parameters, uh, so these are uh, CMD is one of the parameter. Okay, so let's create the Docker image. We are gonna name this random letter, that's the name of the image. Okay, successfully built. And remember with this, you can also test it locally. So you can do Docker run. So with Sam, you need to do Sam build and a bunch of other stuff, but with this, you can test it real easy. Okay, it is running, so I'm going to create a new terminal so I can curl it. So you can just copy this, and it's gonna just return a bunch of random stuff. Uh, that's what this uh, function does. As long as the HTTP status code is 200, we are good. Okay, so the status code is 200. Uh, going back here, Control C to end this. Now you create the ECR repository. Uh, and then you tag it, and then you do a Docker push. And you can replace uh, this uh, 1234 with your account ID and this SA East 1 with the region you are using. So I'm gonna do this, but I'm not gonna show you this step because uh, this is pretty straightforward, uh, but I'll show you the ECR image. Okay, so this is my ECR, and you can see that this created this random letter repository, uh, and then we just pushed this Docker image uh, to this repository. So now the fun part. Now let's go to Lambda and you'll see the console changed. Okay, so I'm in the Lambda console. Click create function. So this container image, it was not there before. So this just got added <laughs> like yesterday. So click this container image and here give a function name, Lambda container test. So under container image URI, you can click browse images. And here you can select repository for us. We'll select this random letter, click the latest one, select image. Keep everything as is, click create function. Okay, our function is created. Uh, so one thing is with this, you cannot really see the function code in the console like you used to before, right? because the code is baked in the container image. Uh, so let's test it out. So now it is actually grabbing the image uh, from the repository. Okay, status code 200. Uh, so body is some random stuff. It is best 64 encoded. So all right, now let's hook it up to HTTP API and you will see uh, the letters are coming back as attachment. So to add as HTTP, you can click add trigger, select API gateway, create an API, HTTP API, security, let's keep it open, click add. Okay, it's enabled. Now if you click this API endpoint, you will see some stuff is getting downloaded. So basically, uh, that's that's just random letter. So if I just open, so you can see this dear this, and then it just randomly put some stuff, and then some random letters. I don't know what language is this. And then it signs off uh, randomly. All right, guys and girls, that's the demo. Uh, also, I'm updating my course 
uh, with all the new serverless features that's announced on reInvent. Uh, so feel free to check it out. I'll give it in the description. But that's it. If you like this video, if you found this video useful, uh, please give it a like, uh, do the subscribe, uh, put something in the comment, right? That really helps YouTube algorithm and that helps this channel grow. Uh, all right, with that, I'll see you guys and girls uh, in the next video. Bye.